Hello and welcome to New Year Crypto Talk. Today's project review is on Pundi X. I did do a brief introduction to the project back in March when it got released to the exchanges and I am wanting to do a deep dive into the project because I'm very excited about a lot of the news that's been coming out for it over the past month and a half since I initially reviewed it. And I want to go into a lot of the partnerships that they've been doing, looking into the tech they have, jumping a little bit into their white paper to see exactly what's going on with the project. So I want to first go over why I think Pundiax has a huge advantage over a lot of projects right now and why I think they are still a very undervalued company and there is a lot of tech. There is a lot of things happening with the project. So first looking at the investment portfolio of Hashed, which is a Korean crypto accelerator and has a portfolio of over 40 altcoins and pre-ICO projects already. If we look at their actual investment portfolio, this is Hashed. We can see that where they have their current holdings, this is ranked from highest to lowest. Their first one is in Ethereum, then they have EOS, Icon, Qtum, Amisigo, Ontology, then Pundi X. So to look at it, Pundi X is actually $631 million they've invested into the project when they have invested only 856 into projects like Ontology, 1.5 billion in Qtum, 1.5 in Icon, and then a lot more into EOS and Ethereum because they are much larger projects. But to see that they have actually put their money behind this project is a big plus. Always a good thing to see that a huge hedge fund that's backing a lot of these crypto projects is behind Pundiax. I did announce this last week during Consensus 2018. Wanchain and Pundiax went into a partnership. We don't have the details about it. It should hopefully be coming in the near future. But I think between the, the point of sale module that Pundiax built and Wanchain's interoperability functionality and their protocol being able to utilize multi cross-chain platforms is definitely useful for a project like Pundiax. So having a partnership with Wanchain is a huge plus for me. Coinness is going to be the first Korean crypto exchange to issue 300,000 Pundiax cards. Coinness has a half a billion registered users on their site. So to be able to offer up 300,000 Pundi X cards to Korean residents can actually be a huge plus for the project. It is not a Visa or a credit card. This is actually an NFC based card. I'll go into the tech shortly. So there is a partnership between NEM and Pundi, a $17 million partnership to build a NEM based X POS platform on with Pundi. So Pundi will build 20,000 point of sale terminals for the NEM blockchain. So these are specific NEM blockchain based point of service modules. And here is an actual reveal of the platform for NEM. So they are going to be building this and Pundiax is basically a application that they built either on top of iOS or Android and they can build this specific for the different blockchains that are needed. They have mentioned that they don't plan on doing this very often unless there's a huge partnership for a blockchain specifically. Pundiax plan, plans on utilizing the existing Ethereum platform as well as integration with Qtum, NEM and others. So they don't plan on building specific projects projects because there are specific tokens for this NEM point of sale platform. This might be a one off, but it is very nice to see that they are working with NEM on this type of project. Pundiax also is one of the first to support Zcash, so a privacy protocol on a point of sale product is always a big thing and very unique when it comes to this type of industry. And if you want to look at an actual video, I will link these in my description below. But basically, we can watch an actual video of the actual Pundi device. And here you can see how the Pundi X device actually allows you not only to utilize the cryptocurrency payment, but you can actually pay with cash. The pass card, which is the NFC based Pundi card, the mobile app for Pundi, or you can actually use a bank card. So these are point of sale products that actually will allow replacement of existing functionality. They do plan to offer these for free for the first year of service to Indonesian companies that are willing to work with the product and this can replace their existing functionality. So being able to integrate existing payment methods will be a huge plus for platform 
for companies to be able to move into this industry and be able to increase the visibility for cryptocurrency. There is also a demo that was done last week at Consensus 2018 where they also offered up a demo of how the functionality works for paying for services on their platform. One thing to note before I go into the deep dive, I did actually review this back in March, end of March, and I am kicking myself that I did not jump on my own guidance because obviously I go through a million projects. I find things that are fantastic, but I don't always have the funds myself to jump into projects. I want to get everyone else to be able to know about these projects and do their review, but I don't always jump into it. Obviously, if you look at the price right now, it was at 0.000949 US dollars and it was at 12 Satoshis. If we look at it right now, it's sitting at around 0.012372 US dollars and 150 Satoshis. So it has gone up almost 15x when it comes to US dollar and about 12x when it comes to Satoshi. Huge movement in price. I wish I personally jumped into it at the time. It has done some awesome movement since I reviewed it way, way back here. And now, you know, it did hit almost one point five cents I believe so the actual market has been doing really well with Pundix and if we go to coincodex.com because right now coin market cap really hasn't taken into the circulating supply since it's a very funky circulating supply because they're doing token swaps right now for the original token to the NPXS token and there's also airdrops happening they're very funky when it comes to that but there's an approximate circulating supply about 61 billion tokens this might increase so we might be sitting around a 740 million dollar market cap take this with a grain of salt obviously there might be a little bit of a differential but as of right now this is what I would go for it is still a Oh, it's under $1 billion market cap, but I think with this model that they have with hardware-based blockchain technology moving into the, the POS industry, I definitely think they have a leg up when it comes to other products out there. So even though it's $743 million, I think when I talked about this initially, it was around $50 million market cap, give or take. So it was under $100 million, and that's when I thought it was a, a gem. And I still think it's a, a gem in the rough uh, when it comes to the project and the, the long-term feasibility of the project. So I, I definitely, even with this high market cap right now, I still believe in the project, and I still ha think it has a lot of room to grow. So going to their website, I'm going to try to run through this as quick as possible and kind of go through their white paper as well because the technology behind it is pretty um, technical. They don't go too much into it in the white paper, but I want you to understand what they're looking to do. Any store can buy, sell, and accept cryptocurrency. So not only will it be a point of sale product, but you can actually buy cryptocurrency directly from the platform, almost like an ATM. So because it will be linking to exchanges, you'll be able to actually go to these POS devices, buy cryptocurrency from an exchange. You can load up a card. You can sell from the card. You can do what you would do in an exchange, basically, or you can actually order directly there. So it's opening up a different medium to be able to buy cryptocurrency in Southeast Asia. That is where they are starting. They are starting in Indonesia, then moving eventually into other markets within the Southeast Asian countries. So they say buying cryptocurrency should be as easy as buying a bottled water. As the Walmart and 7-Eleven of cryptocurrency, we want users to buy and use cryptocurrency anytime, anywhere. Thinking about this, being uh, that I have traveled to Southeast Asia before, you know, having stores like 7-Eleven, which are very popular and a big thing when it comes to uh, some of these countries, I can see these type of devices in a 7-Eleven. Because if you've ever been in a 7-Eleven in the United States, they actually have a pretty unique point of sale service. I think they might actually have their own proprietary hardware. It is very unique and I do believe this type of technology would be a huge plus for companies like that moving forward. If anyone who works at 7-Eleven is watching this, take note. They offer multiple different types of solutions within the platform. They are basically having different pieces of the pie. They have the Pundi X Pass, which is basically an NFC based card that can you basically can swipe 
to buy, sell with a single swipe, and this is where you load up and store your cryptocurrency. There's also a mobile payment integration where you can basically use a digital wallet to scan the QR code. So top up supported basically is allowing you to refill your card to get more money. And as I mentioned before, it links with the exchange to be able to order that. They also have printouts and they have rewards for using the Pundix platform. So both the vendor and yourself get rewarded for using the platform and it helps incentivize to use the platform more often. And here you can see how the point of sale service allows you to use different cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Pundi X, NEM, Qtum, uh, Zcash, Stellar Lumens, Litecoin, and you'll also be able to use different ERC20 tokens, Qtum tokens once they open up different platforms on theirs, Stellar Lumen tokens, and I think with OneChain they'll be able to open up even more options. So here is where you see the different the different reasons why to choose the Pundi platform, accepting cryptocurrency as a payment, supporting different cryptocurrencies, supporting wallet payments such as Zabao, X Wallet, Nem Wallet, and more. There's a support loyalty membership management system, intelligence clearing system to increase the value of the store properties, support cryptocurrency payment cards such as Pundi X Pass, establish credit history and reduce financial risk, supports promotional and Pundi X reward system, selling and buying cryptocurrencies, support mobile payment apps such as Alipay, E2Pay, GoPay, Pundi Pundi, and WeChat Play, provide a gateway for financial service providers, and support third-party delivery and logistics service providers. They also work with things like Apple Pay and Samsung Pay. That information will be upcoming in the future. And then they're going to be offering different models for different needs. So depending on the type of user, you can have a simple device, which is this is the basic device that they plan on going first. Then they're going to have a mobile one, which is a little bit more friendly, similar to what you see in the Apple Store, where people walking around with devices, and then a huge piece that most likely can be at a front desk, a kiosk, or whatever it might be. This could be utilized as a exchange if someone wants to be able to purchase cryptocurrency. This is a lot more user friendly for someone to be able to use that information. As mentioned earlier, retailers that are using the XPOS solution will get one year waived free of service fee. Pundix will be increasing the list of cryptocurrencies over time. Merchants can access their account through Pundix platform to receive their preferred settlement currencies such as BTC, XEM, etc. There will be a rewards platform where customers can get free NPXS tokens and will be able to redeem it at their next purchase. Redeemable value of NPXS will be based on the current market price. So here with the Pundi X platform and the different XPOS devices, you'll be able to go to an exchange, work with other token holders. You'll have, be able to link with your digital wallet. They'll work with the NEM ledger through the NEM XPOS platform. And also all everything is stored on the Ethereum blockchain through the Pundi X platform. What we see here in the roadmap Q1 2018, they talk about their the units that are being pre-ordered being able to add EMV and magnetic reader support, uh, publish the SDK documentation, establish a London office, they pass 27 security and compliance tests, they also want to open in Q2 a Tokyo and Seoul office, open 2,000 XPOS units for individual pre-orders, deliver 4,000 units for corporate orders, and to deliver 300,000 XPass cards to that Korean exchange mentioned earlier. They also want to send up a Pundi X Foundation for Transparency and Compliance and establish partnerships in North America. Q3 establishes two offices in North America and South America, complete the NPXS swap, so all the original tokens will be done with. To establish a bank and governmental partnership with XPOS and XPASS rollout. Q4 is to launch the summit, launch the third party apps on the platform, and to deliver 20,000 units for corporate orders. And then Q1 2019 to reach a minimum deployment of 50,000 units in total. So a lot of new things that are going on with the platform and they have in store. If we look at their partnerships, there's a lot of things that are going on right now. They are working with different payment vendors, and for blockchain specifically, there's Qtum, there's NEM, there's A-Chain, there's Stellar. And then they also have a lot of other payment platforms and fintech programs. So a lot of things coming from the Pundi X team. 
here's a list of the three different types of products that they'll be doing which one is the XPOS one is XPOS handy and then the XPOS desk so they have a, a description of what they are able to do and how they are going to differentiate as I mentioned Apple Pay Samsung Pay and Visa MasterCard are not available in the initial XPOS platform they will be on the handy and the desk moving forward this is a gra great graphical representation of the token flow and the Pundix ecosystem and how it works through the point of sale network and the individual consumers, how they can send requests, buy tokens, receive tokens, make payments, and how all this information flows throughout the whole system from exchanges to token pools to settlement systems to escrow and so forth. Looking at their team, Zach Chow uh, is the person who most likely you will have seen before in the past re representing the team. He is a former W3C chair of HTML5 Interest Group. He was also a scholarship recipient at Sweden KTH and Norway NTNU. He has spent 12 years in the tech industry in browser and mobile gaming market. Uh, Pit Wang is the CTO and COO. He also has started and sold several businesses, including a 200-person company. Konstantin Papa Dimitriou, uh, or also known as Kiki, has served, uh, has worked 17 years experience as a CEO of two Indonesian fintech companies and E2Pay. So that he is experienced when it comes to this electronic payment method that they're basically looking to implement and E2Pay is one of the ones that they are integrating with. Then there's Danny Lim who is the CFO who is a APAC financing expert who has product design experience with Baidu and Lenovo and he is also a PhD law scholar from Singhao University which is one of the top universities in the world. So moving to the white paper, I am going to hit on some of the highlights on this. I'm not going to go too much into detail on the tech side of things because I believe with this kind of platform, understanding the business side and the social aspect side of it makes a lot more sense. So they talk about how they are concentrating right now their initial traction on the Southeast Asian market. That's where they feel comfortable. They have a local team with deep understanding on the Indonesian market. Plus they have a track record, connections and products to match the local market's needs. They will spend the next two years building an extensive coverage of convenience stores, shopping malls, retail shops, chain outlets, cafe, restaurants and other outlets. They will use the Pundi apps to cover an even greater number of smaller sellers. Our goal is to, is for users to be able to buy and spend cryptocurrency within five minutes walk of any location in Jakarta. Once they finish their outreach in Indonesia, they plan to expand it to Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Japan, and other regional markets simultaneously. Their plan is to cover Southeast Asia within three years. So that's 100 million users within three years they plan on marketing to. So the question about fiat to crypto, how do Pundi X users buy cryptocurrency? So there's three ways. The mobile wallet can allow users to directly purchase cryptocurrencies. Mobile to card users can transfer cryptocurrency from the mobile app to the cards. And then there's the point of sale platform to cards so they can actually go directly to the card and purchase directly from the device. So here's the functionality between the different platforms. So with the Pundi X mobile app, a smartphone app can do the following things. Buy the different types of cryptocurrency using cash or card. They can also sell cryptocurrency for cash. They can top up fiat money in a digital wallet. They can buy utilities and services, electricity using cryptocurrency basically. Then they have the Pundi X card, which will be the physical multi-currency wallet for fiat and cryptocurrency. And they can utilize this to swipe through NFC technology and contactless technology within the point of sale devices. And then there's the actual the Pundi X platform, which is a reference implementation stack, including software and hardware that performs the full point of sale. So with the Pundi X mobile app, it's actually interesting to find out that they have existing apps right now. It's called Pundi Pundi, and they started February 2017. Currently, they have over 100,000 downloads, achieving 20,000 monthly active users right now. Right now, over 500 retail outlets, restaurants, and cafes accept their pay-by-QR apps. So right now... Indonesia has been trying to roll out this information. Basically, they're trying to be similar to what Alipay is doing in China. 
and what Google Pay and Samsung Pay are doing here in the United States. So they're trying to already utilize an existing platform and an existing user base within what they are planning to build now. So they are allowing that leverage of existing functionality, which I'm always a big fan of when it comes to technology, being able to have working product, working off it and building it into the blockchain is going to be a huge push for the project. So connecting to other cryptocurrency exchanges, the devices will connect to different online cryptocurrency exchanges since each one has a different bid to ask spread and price level. Users and merchants decide for themselves which platform best suits their needs. Users then can choose which preferred cryptocurrency or exchanges they want and the market will help determine which platform offers the best combination of price and service. So it is really interesting to be able to see what type of exchanges they will integrate with if these are going to be decentralized exchanges or centralized. So where are their progress right now? Basically, as I mentioned before, they're looking to become the Alipay of Indonesia because as of right now, they are one of the largest pay by QR applications right now. So Pundi X is aiming to become the cryptocurrency's largest offline sales network. Think Walmart to 7-Eleven, providing the first comprehensive online to offline cryptocurrency sales solution that includes a decentralized sales network, a multi-currency wallet, which is fiat and crypto, a decentralized trading platform, a decentralized ICO platform, and as I mentioned, Pundi Pundi is already one of the Indonesia's largest QR payment applications. They have a lot going right now. They have a lot of things planned. They do have a release program. If you guys are not familiar, if you were in their ICO, you're probably familiar that the ICO is a three-year lockup and that 30% you received initially and the rest of the 70% will then accrue over the next 36 months and there is an actual airdrop calendar that tells you when the actual accruals happen. So a lot of great information there. So what do I think of the platform? I think Pundix has a huge leverage and I think if they keep knocking out these partnership deals with other platforms and other blockchain technologies, they're definitely going to succeed. I think the hardware functionality is a great move for them because I think the biggest thing that's going to happen with certain markets right now is being able to get people to utilize cryptocurrency at any types of stores. So I know they're trying to do a niche market of Southeast Asia. I think that's it's very smart because being able to work in a specific area, know the, the market that you have, do a good job there, move to another market. I think they have a great strategy being able to get all of Southeast Asia. I think those markets actually are a lot more understanding and the acceptance for this type of technology will be a lot easier than the Western world would be with this type of technology and rolling out huge point of sale products within the United States and other countries along those lines. So I definitely think that technology is there. I think the blockchain is awesome. I think the partnerships are great. The team is great. The price is still fantastic. Obviously, I wish it was with the 12 Satoshis that I looked at a month and a half ago, but it is still a good buy in my personal opinion. And if you're in Pundiax, good for you. It's definitely been doing fantastic the past couple of months. So I definitely think it's something worth looking into. Always do your own research. It's not financial advice. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell notification for more videos, and please leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thanks again. Have a great night. Take it easy.